And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, today we're going to mutate some plants. I have been looking forward to this for a long, long time. The peculiar plants update means if you grow plants in range of radiation, when you harvest the plants and they drop a seed, only the seed that's dropped when it's harvested has a chance to be mutated, depending on how much radiation it's exposed to. Ooh, that's 313 rads. That's beautiful. Mmm. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking over here we're going to go over sleep wheat. That's a pretty radioactive area in there. It's just the sleep wheat is the one I really, really, really want to get uh, the mutated seeds version of. We can get some really powerful bonuses on top of sleep wheat. Of course, to grow sleep wheat up here, the temperature is a little bit warm, so we're going to want to stick in some sort of cooling solution to chill down the whole area. And we're probably not going to want to chill down this area over here. We're going to want to grow different types of crops all around here. For example, bristle, blo bristle blossoms as well. We'd like a few of those to be mutated. So I'm thinking we're going to chuck a steam turbine up here and make ourselves a sort of a, a very cold ice box. And we'll use that ice box to regulate the temperature of all the rest of the uh, areas. Uh, let me think. Oh, while this is going on, we can only have three people in here at a time because of the lead suit docks. I think we should get started up here on making ourselves the... Uh, the steam turbine setup. I was wondering why this was taking so long, then I realized, yeah, I, I'd replaced the entire ladder system with plastic. All of our duplicates are currently very busy upgrading the entire ladder system from the top to the bottom of the map. In fact, I think we'll re replace our core base plastic with plastic ladders as well. That might take a minute or two to complete, but you know, we've got time, we got time. What we're going to want to do here is make ourselves a big pool of chill. Well, we're going to chill this whole area down by putting a steam turbine on top of it. That steam turbine will chill this down, and this will be sort of our, uh, our icy block that we tap everything into. So we can plug in a few areas to cool them down, specifically this area down here. I'm thinking this is going to be all sleep wheat. Do we need this much sleep wheat? No, but I want to mutate them as quickly as possible. We might want to route that uh, emergency water supply. That's the emergency water supply for our reactor. That is going to route, be routed up here and across and down and in, you know, because if they were to pop at any point, that would be rather uncomfortable. Oh, and after the last mess up, I figured out what was causing this reactor to uh, uh, have finicky problems before. It's to do with the coolant itself, it seems. Now, from what I could trace down, it was difficult to replicate, but these aqua tuners, they sometimes contain nuclear waste. Now, if you notice, it keeps going on and off, and yeah, never mind. We were lucky to catch it the first time, but sometimes they will contain nuclear waste. And what will happen is every, like once a day or something like that, all the buildings will spit out the nuclear waste they're containing. Now, I don't know if it happens once every 24 hours or when exactly that happens. I was only able to do it once. But what happens is if that, if this is containing 10 kilos of nuclear waste, it sometimes just plops out of the machine onto the ground. And what that did was it drained the nuclear waste out of our cooling loops and our cooling stopped working because there wasn't as much coolant going through the pipes. It took a while, but eventually there was just so little coolant going through the pipes, about five, 10% less than we had. Yeah, everything just stopped working. So instead, what we've done here is we've got, yeah, this cross ships shape section. What this does is it keeps a couple of blobs of nuclear waste just sitting here. And if there's ever a gap in these pipes, it gets spit on. And that's it. Now, of course, this spit on piece is going to be 217 Celsius, which is a little hot. But with the giant loop that's there, it, it evens it out fast enough that we don't have to worry too much. Now, you notice... You notice there every so often these things are stopping. It's just, it's so rare. That's why it takes so long for this problem to represent itself. As far as I can tell. All right, uh, let's get up here and start working on this. With this area constructed, we actually have, well, we have a reasonably insulated section here. Of course, it is touching, well, right adjacent to a boiling hot nuclear reactor, but that's fine. That's sort of what we want. All we have to do here is put in a little aqua tuner setup, use that to chill all of this down to very, very, very cold, and then... Uh, tap on something here. Once this is frozen solid, we can access it from the other side and do a few fancy things with it. But for now, what we're going to do is set up this aqua tuner. Oh, you know what? Let's put in a ladder segment there. This should be fairly quick to put together. I don't even think we're going to bother with an atmosphere for this steam turbine. We're just going to put a thin layer of coolant along the bottom of it, say some crude oil or something like that. That'll help uh, keep it cool. Oh, damn it. I forgot something. I forgot to ensure the cooling loop went around where the steam turbine was going to be. It could have been awkward. All right, that's looking just about right. We're gonna get some polluted water to dump in there and then a steam turbine on top. This should be, well, just basically the same straightforward heat deletion device we've been using for a while now. We got polluted water in place. We got clean water layer on top. No gas is trapped. Steam turbine's gonna get ch chucked on top there and, oop, wrong button. Wastewater is going to come down here. It's going to be cooled by this radiant pipe passing through here. And we're gonna put a thin layer of petroleum or crude oil along there to transfer the heat to the steam turbine itself. Now, for coolant, I think we're going to start with polluted water, but we might move to ethanol. We want to get this very cold if, well, 
We're going to start with steepweed, but there's a couple of other plants I'd really like to test, and one of them really likes cold temperatures. Here comes our petroleum layer right now, and that's 30 kilos of petroleum. Do we really want... No, I don't think we want all 30 kilos. You know what? That is... Yeah, that's enough. Has not flooded it. And what are we looking at from the petroleum front? Yeah, about four kilos of junk. That's plenty. All right, then. Let's fire this sucker up. In that case, we want to fill it... Oh, I was about to pour polluted water into a vacuum that was... Uh, I don't know, would have been a bit silly. And so we want to grab some dry roll here. Here, maybe put it in as a background. Then we're going to dump in some polluted water here. The polluted water will get pumped out here and dumped onto the cooling loop. Cooling loop's going to go all the way through here and it's going to chill this down. And we set it to minus four. So we want to chill this whole block down to minus four. And we're going to start with polluted water. Now we're not going to use nuclear waste. Nuclear waste is great. However, once it hits uh, 26.9 degrees, it starts freezing in the pipes, and we want to go colder than that. In fact, we're probably going to go to ethanol levels of coldness, which means we're going to want to get some ethanol, but that has a much lower uh, specific heat capacity than polluted water, so we might as well use polluted water for the starting section of this. There she goes. Anyway, so polluted water goes on here, goes all the way around. Oh, actually, what's it coming in at? It's actually pretty chill already. Yeah, well, we'll pass through here. We're going to have to chill all of this down from, what is it, at 54 degrees? Yeah, this could take a few minutes. Cooling loop is fully loaded. Uh, that should, well, it's going to take a few cycles before it catches up. But in the meantime, let's get our preparations underway. Well, under here. Oh, and get our hands on some ethanol. We're going to need a bunch of ethanol to finish this off. In fact, let's just delete this background blocks, get rid of the polluted water, and put some ethanol there in there instead. It just says prep work. Well, heat has finally gotten up to the point where the water in here is starting to boil. What's going on here? Ah, there we go. Please tell me didn't it. It's unlikely you'll end up in any polluted oxygen, but no, no, there was nothing. I was just getting paranoid there for a second. We will end up with a few little pieces of dirt in there because of the polluted water, but honestly, they stopped bothering me a long time ago. This is slowly but surely dragging the temperature of this down. In the meantime, we're going to go back here and we are going to... Well, we're going to dump a bunch of ethanol into this, and we're going to use that ethanol back home to do all our cooling. A little bit of quick rearrangement, and all of that precious, precious ethanol down there will get dumped into this liquid pump, and pump right through that gate. Right the other side, it'll pop, and it'll come straight into a storage tank we've set up over here. Uh, where did we put you? Ah, yes. So, storage tank down here. That's where all our ethanol will go. Once we've got enough of it, we'll stop the transfer, and we can use that ethanol for our cooling loop. How close are we up here? I really want to start growing some sleet wheat because this is going to take a while. Well, we wait for this water to cool down very, very, very slowly. I, I forgot how long it takes to cool, to cool down this many tons of water. We don't have any super coolant, so there's no real speeding this along. But while that's going on, we're going to go back to our home base and we're going to put in a seed analyzer. Now, it should be under science stations. Ah, here we are. Botanical analyzer. Right, we'll stick you right there. I've already got power wires inbound. Alright, your plan here is going to be to scan the seeds we get. Now, the seeds you get are pretty identifiable. Let's see, yeah, for example, you can see that little DNA twist symbol there? That is when you know you've got an unknown mutation that you would like to examine. You know, I kind of half wish that's the one we're looking for, but mm, never mind. We'll, uh, we'll set this up, and then we're going to start analysing all the seeds that we get. And I think we've already got a few. Uh, one of the... this is... Mm, one of the things we've got to worry about, though, is the sleet wheat grains. Those sleet wheat grains, they get stuck in here and they're inaccessible unless we do some uh, shenaniganry, which we're not. But sleet wheat grains will be cooked up just as normal if they're original seeds or mutated seeds. So we want to stop putting sleet wheat grain in there. Instead, we're going to go back to storing our sleet wheat grain, say, down here, where, you know, it won't cause us any problems. And by that, I mean, if it's stored here, it should last for an eternity and we still have access to it. It's just uh, the way our food system is designed. It's not meant to be accessible all the time. This just means we can bring things like pinchy pepper nuts and save them for later. We are going to want to make a lot of pepper bread later on. All right, with this done up, I should mean our scientists will come along. Well, once the power gets plugged in, our scientists will come along and they'll start analyzing. What have we got? We've got mealwood seeds and sleep wheat grain that can be analyzed. An analyzed, yep. Blah. Okay, so it'll analyze both of those once it gets its hands on them. Where's the urns? One of the weird things about the botanical analyzer is... It requires a, a skill you probably have never invested too much in before, and that is farming. So you need to improve farming level 3 so you can identify mutant seeds at the botanical analyzer. However, how quickly you identify the mutant seeds is based upon um, your actual science skill. So we just scrubbed 
Philip Matthew Torres here so that we could send him to the botanical analyzer. Now if we check the errands here. No, Chief Multihead, one moment. Here they are. Excellent. And... Okay, we can actually see them fiddling around with the DNA on the screen. Perfect. Seed analysis complete. Uh, let's see what we got here. If you click on the seed, it'll tell you exactly what it provides. But I think the best way to do this would be to go up to one of these farming plots and there you can select what you put in. For example, we can select mealwood and then it gives us mealwood original or mealwood exuberant. Now, if you scroll down here, it'll tell you what it does, but it also gives you a little pop out. Exuberant means you get a life cycle minus 75%, as in it grows four times faster. So this seed will grow four times faster than a normal seed, a normal mealwood seed. Its fertilizer usage, however, goes up by 50%. It also gives you a bonus crop of 400 grams of rot pile, meaning the moment it's, uh, once you harvest it, you'll also get four, four kilos of rot pile with it, which is kind of amazing. That's basically free soil. Uh, it also comes with 10,000 germs of food poisoning on it. Not great. Uh, it also requires complete darkness, it can't be grown in light, and it doesn't drop seeds. So these mutant seeds won't allow you to grow more seeds. And exuberant is probably, yeah, no, it's my favorite. It's my favorite mutation so far. I'm, I'm Well, it's no good for the, the mealwood, but if this is exuberant, that would be, oh, that would be so handy. But never mind. We are going to pop in here and grab that one right now. Sleet wheat is a bit of an odd duck when it comes to mutations. You see, most plants only drop one seed. However, well, most regular plants, not sleet wheat, most regular plants only drop one seed when you harvest them and you only have a percentage chance, but sleet wheat always drops seeds. And as well as that, if it gets a mutation, from what I've tested, well, it's been a while since I tested it, it drops 18 seeds every time, and if it gets a mutation, all 18 seeds will have that mutation. Which means all we have to do is analyze one seed and we'll know what the rest have. Well, actually, to use them, we'll have to analyze them all, but that's, that's fine. What we'll do is we'll bring them all back to uh, this botanical analyzer, we'll set it to level 7, and once the, the seeds are start getting delivered, we'll analyze a lot of them. Once we get the first one, though, we'll know if we've got exuberant or not. Our next sleet wheat grain, well, our next seed up is this sleet wheat grain, which is super specialized. Now, what this does, you know what, let's go back to the uh, hydroponics farm here. Now, you can see, if we go into this one, it says this plant is mutated, blah, 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 but uh, viable temperature range, minus 80%. So you can check down here, this thing, its temperature ranges have been shrunk, so only 20% of its original temperature range is still about. So originally it was minus 55 to 5. With this variant, it's minus 31 to minus 19, which is almost, it's impossible to grow. You have to feed it water, and the water will freeze in the pipes, because it takes clean water, yet this is just terrible. It's not one of my favourite ones. Yield amount is doubled, so you get twice as much out of it, but for the same everything... But that's still terrible. It's just, no, what we want is exuberant. We'll just have to wait until we get a, a patch of those. And this person is going to have to go through and analyze all the seeds. I think we've got 15 super specialized ones. There should be about another three more to go then. Good luck, Philip. You can uh, keep examining away. Our freezing is going relatively successful. We've only got a few tiles left to go and we can finally maybe break open the bottom. Of it. Oh, four tiles left to go, sorry. Uh, once that's done, I think we can finally hook this up and start growing ourselves some uh, mutated sleet wheat. Unfortunately, I think the polluted water has gone as cold as it's going to take us. If we put the, this set to any lower, we'll actually free, we're, we have a chance of freezing the water in the pipes. So let's not do that. Instead, we are going to rip all of that out. And we're going to dump it all into a liquid tank over here. Come on. With all the polluted water out of the system, we'll dump in some ethanol and then we can set it to a much lower temperature. The reason we're switching to ethanol is it can go down as low as minus 114. This gives us a far larger range to work with. And we're going to want to do some playing around down here and having more temperatures to work with gives us more options. Downsides are, well, this stuff actually has a much lower thermal conduct, or is it specific heat capacity of 2.46. Water has 4.17. So we're going to have to pay twice as much energy to get the same amount of cooling. But we don't really care about the power requirements right now. We've got nuclear power. We're great. It's just it will mean we won't be able to run quite as much, but that's fine. This is only meant to be small farms. All right, and let's set that to, oh, I'd say minus, minus 30 should be plenty for our needs. That should hopefully quickly freeze the last of that. Now that we've got a little bit more coolant running through, it'll be down to, oh, maybe the coolant starts a little bit warm. It'll be fine. We'll freeze this area in no time at all. And now we get to see this last chunk freeze. Notice it's at minus 3.6. Minus 3.6 degrees centigrade, but the moment it turns to ice, for some reason it turns to minus 2.2. Not sure of the exact reasoning behind that, but I think it's to stop state changes or something, but never mind. It's done. We finally have a block. Uh, let's 
let that run for a little bit longer, make sure the temperatures get down nice and low, and then we're going to hook this up to make sure that this entire area is frozen. What happened to polluted water? I had a bunch of polluted water. Or, damn it, I thought I put down a bunch of uh, petroleum down there. One second. My game did have a little bit of a crash earlier, so I completely removed the speed mod. I think the speed mod was what was causing it. There we go. A tiny little vacuum lock. Normally I wouldn't use these, but in this instance it's fine. This is mostly an experimental little crop growing area. So that perfect vacuum seal in the middle right there will ensure that none of the chill should be able to escape, or more importantly, the heat shouldn't be able to get in. All right, with that done, time to start up here and put in our little uh, cooling section. This is going to be very much a brute force uh, cooling solution we're going to throw through here. We're going to stick in a temperature shift plate there to suck heat out of the ice, dump it into this door. We'll put in, say, a layer of ethanol here to act as some sort of transfer medium. And then we're just going to circulate lots of liquid through it to run down into this uh, crop area. It'll start to make more sense as it all goes together. Oh, just remind you, we're going to need to... Why did water suddenly magically appear there? Oh, God damn it! It's probably the game doing its magical... Mm. It's fine, it's fine. I'll throw in a temperature shift plate. It'll be grand. Oh, come on! Seriously? What we have here is just sort of a, a little box connected up to this with a temperature shift plate. So all the, the chill from here gets injected into this door and the temperature shift plate on this side pulls it out of the door and dumps it into the liquid we're about to throw in here, which is going to be ethanol because it's the only thing that won't freeze. Now, yeah, there we go. And then to, let's make sure we uh, maybe let some of the gases out of there. Yeah, and then we crush them up again, perfect. Now we can cram this whole place full of ethanol and this will make a beautiful transfer medium. Oh, that's enough of you. And that's enough of you. Unfortunately, we do have to get back in there to remove that uh, liquid vent, but that's okay. We can just open the door. I made a silly mistake and left some gas in there, so we're just going to open this section. Took it a little bit of doing, but that'll allow us to force most of the hydrogen. In fact, uh, yeah, let's close that up a bit. Let me force that gas up a little bit faster. Oh, yeah, this is going to take a little while to go, isn't it? You know what? We can wait a minute. We're, we're close. We can start actually running the piping down here. What we're going to do is run water through here through these and then right back up to get rechilled again. And then we're going to plant our sleep weed in here. There we go. The water will come up here, around, go all the way through this, rotate a whole bunch and then come right back up again. It's going to simultaneously water the crops and keep the whole area temperature stable. Of course, we may have accidentally chilled this uh, medium down to minus 13 degrees. That was a bit of a mistake, but once we get most of this hydrogen out of here, it'll be fine. Probably. Or we can install a mini gas pump and just make that whole thing go away really, really quickly. Yeah, I think I prefer that method. That, that That's a lot handier. We are finally done. This is set up. We've got a vacuum in there, so perfect. This is set to 3C. Actually, hmm, let's make that 4C for now. We can lower it down a little bit lower if we want to. That's the grow temperature of sleep wheat. In fact, let's just throw in one sleep wheat here so you can see. Uh, this sleep wheat here, original. Only, original. only the originals will mutate, remember? Uh, this thing, minus 55 to 5C. So we want to make sure that's planted there. It also requires water and dirt. So let's hook up the water. This goes in here. Boom. Water now will go through here. Oh, damn. Hmm. I need to put in unidirectional flow on this. Otherwise, I'm going to have them going backwards and forwards and all sorts of things. Now, my only fear is that first one that passes through there might actually pop because uh, it's so cold in there. But no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Whew. All right. Let's give this a minute to fill up. By putting in the bridge for direction, it's going to flow up through here, come down all the way around, flow through all of these uh, little hydroponic farm tiles and drop off the water necessary, then flow right back up and get chilled. The theory being that as it passes through here, it should acquire, no, it should stabilize the temperature. We're not going to be using 10 kilos per second to feed all these crops. It should be a very small amount of water. So as we just keep injecting it, even if it's a little bit warm, it'll slowly cool down as it passes through and hopefully shouldn't stifle our crops. But this probably will take a cycle or three just to come down to in temperature initially. The water passing through is up to what, 25? Oh, temperature in there got a little bit too warm. There we go. Ooh, I maybe should have made this a larger transfer medium, but you know what? It'll be fine. This is only really meant to jumpstart our crop production. There is something so wrong about having a chill room right beside your nuclear reactor. I mean, I know it's possible with all the insulation and things, but still, it just looks so odd, especially when it's also mounted on top of a bunch of steam turbines operating at 50C. It just feels a little unreasonable. A little bit of a minor adjustment, maybe throw in some, uh, some gold tiles here. 
Yeah, there we go. That should speed up the temperature transfer. What are we getting? 17.2 to 12. Yep, yeah, that's that's far better transferring the temperature. I dropped the temperature in here down to about two degrees for a bit. I've, I've popped it back up to three. But that has carted us all the way down to about three degrees in here, and we have sleep wheat growing. Now all I'm gonna do is pick out some of the more heavily radiated spots like this one and just plant some more sleep wheat. In fact, let's plant a few more than a couple. Ten sleep wheat all planted within 150 rads of of the reactor. Some of them into 230. I think 230 is probably your best. 234 over here. 311 there. I could get 407 if I was willing to move that up a tile, but nah, I'm too lazy. So we'll just have to leave them where they are. But that gives us a good chance of mutating some seeds, though it's going to take a while. So let's maybe speed that up a bit. Now, where is that station? Do you remember the farm station? I remember the farm station. Never found a use for it before. Well, it's very rare you get a use for the farm station, but in this case, I think it's actually well worthwhile. We can double the growth speed on these sleet wheat, and that means they'll be harvestable twice as often, which means we're twice as likely to get. How is body temperature? Oh, we must have had a new injection of water. Fine, we will reduce that to two again. In fact, we could reduce it to one. Hmm. Yeah, let's show it down to one and see how that works. Uh, this will double the growth speed. Doubling the growth speed will double the, the amount of times we've been able to harvest them, which will double the chances of us getting the mutated seeds we're looking for. Sean Bjog here. They are going to grab some micronutrient fertilizer and they're going to start applying it to all of these crops. Uh, what are you looking at? One second, original growing in use. And farmer's touch, double growth speed. Time remaining 2.6 cycles. The reason this is going to last so long is because they've got really good skill. We've been letting them farm the whole time. They're the only good farmer we've got. Uh, they have got agriculture of 16. That's why it boosts the uh, the longevity of this. If you have zero in farming, it'll last one day. But with 16, it seems to last 2.6. So it, for every 10 points, you get an extra day, basically. All right. Now let's show you... Well, this is going to take a while. This is a long-term investment. It's probably going to be oh, 50, 60 cycles before we'll be able to take advantage of this. But let's show you what advantages we will be able to get out of this. Oh, and as well as that, we're going to need to farm some pinch of peppermint plants as well. If we want to make, we want to mass produce lots of sleep wheat grains and we're going to want pinch of peppermints to go with them. But let me pop onto the test map and show you why. Oh, before we go onto the test map, I should probably cover this down here is being fed salt water by our geyser far down to the bottom right. And this salt water is being cleaned and then sent up here where it, it sieves on. So you'll notice here, this is coming out and it's like down to 9.7 kgs. That's because some of it is being consumed by the plants. So what we're doing is injecting about 0.3 of a kilo of water per second. So you'll notice here it's 4.1 and by the time it gets to the other side, it's 5.2. That's because the water coming in is, well, it's not, it's not as cold as the water in here. So that gets out a little bit warmer, it gets up to the top in here, and then it passes through here to get chilled down, and then goes round and round we go. In fact, you got that down to one degree. Just a, a simple way of making sure we have a nice temperature control room that stays stable the whole time, and we don't have to worry about it. A little bit of, if the dirt comes in and it's a little warm, we don't have to care. Otherwise, you have to start chilling your dirt and doing all sorts of stuff. This, this just simplifies things. This here is a list of all the different mutations you can get on your plants. And uh, most of them are actually pretty terrible because all of them are completely smashed by exuberant. Exuberant is the best of the lot of them, but let me show you probably the simplest way to explain it. This is, say, super specialized. This has a yield of plus 100%, and, but it reduces the temperature range by 80. 80%. Uh, you've seen this one already, but this doubles your crop yields. And this doesn't even come anywhere close to the power of exuberant. Uh, the reason being... Exuberant reduces the life cycle by 75%, meaning the plant grows four times as quickly. I've got a sample plant we can look at in a minute. That's powerful. That means, okay, you, you get four times as much plant for the for planting one plant. However, it does require 50% more fertilizer, as in you need to feed it 50% more resources, which seems to reduce its effectiveness. However, there's just ways around this. We'll, we'll, we'll go over that in a minute. But I just want to remember, this one is probably the second best plant to have is super specialized, where you can double the actual crop output. Another interesting one here is lysi, which means the plant gives an extra plus 600 calories of meal lice. This one's very interesting because these things can apply to just about any plant. As far as I'm aware, you could apply lysi to bam lilies. Bam lilies don't actually require any fertilizer as far as I'm aware. You just grow them in chlorine. So this could theoretically allow you to get infant food, but we don't need that. Just uh, let's have a quick look at exuberant and see how it, how powerful it really is. This smelly looking plant with the weird symbols coming off it is sleet wheat with the exuberant mutation. 
Now, if you check down here, it actually tells you its domestic life cycle and it's 4.5 cycles. Remember, it goes four times as fast. It normally takes 18 cycles. So instead, it takes 4.5 cycles. It takes a little bit more fertilizer, 7.5 fertilizer, as opposed to the five fertilizer of other plants. And it'll take 30 water as opposed to the 20. So you're paying 50% more, but it grows four times faster, which seems great. But throw in a farming station. Now, this is where stuff gets ridiculously out of control. Unlike the other ones, this one can, you double this down, and what happens is you've basically reduced its grow time from 4.5 cycles to 2.25 cycles. That's just incredibly powerful. You've gone from quadrupling your output to increasing it eightfold. Because this, it, it's sort of like a stacking thing. Since you've quadrupled it, then you throw on the farming station, that doubles it down again, and you've basically ends up with eight times the growth speed. Now to try and, uh, hmm, let, let's just get a little visual representation of this. This here is, say, one sleet wheat, and imagine this is our uh, our exuberant one. It takes one and a half times the plant resources to feed it. Uh, I, I, it can't really do a half plant, so just imagine it only takes one and a half of the plant resources to feed it. And this is how much sleet wheat it will actually produce, as in it produces eight sleet wheat, assuming you fertilize it and give it a little macronutrient boost. That's, that's the output you get out of it. It's, hmm. Also, uh, one last thing, you can also apply grub grub rubs to it which increase its growth speed by an additional 50 percent on top of that which means this plant which has just been harvested a split second ago i actually moved everything out of the way of it will be ready to harvest in 1.8 cycles in 1.8 cycles you can harvest this plant again that's how fast it grows when you stack everything on top of it nothing else you, you can stack on top of all the others but because this one starts so high with a quadruple increase in speed it's just nothing else can compete with this. It's the number one mutation you can get for your crops. However, there are other downsides to this. These things can only grow with radiation around. So these things have to be in range of at least 25 rads or they won't grow. For example, this plant here is in 13 rads. It's sleet weed exuberant and it doesn't grow. So you need to keep them in range of a radiation source. Simple way to do that, wheeze warts spaced seven tiles apart. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you notice in the middle here, it's 28 rads. So, oh, is that 24? No, 29, 28, 29. Yep. So basically, with, with two weeds worth seven tiles apart, everything in the middle can grow. Now, you may think, well, that's not a lot of space. How many sleep weed can we fit in there? Well, let's just go over the numbers quickly on how many dupes you can feed with just one of these. For a normal sleep wheat, you can feed about 0.4 of a duplicate with one normal sleep wheat. That, so... Basically, you need two and a half of these just to feed one dupe. With an exuberant one, before you even throw on fertilizer, that thing will feed 1.6 dupes. So you can feed like 1.6 dupes just with one of them. Throw in the fertilizer, you can feed 3.2 dupes. Take one plant, this one plant could feed all three dupes of this colony. That's how incredibly powerful it is. And I'm not even going to try working it out for grub grub rubs and all that stuff. That just gets just ludicrous at that point. Plus, I don't think grub grub rubs can... What's the temperature can they survive down to? Never mind. They can live down as far as minus 30. So they could actually... You could actually dump a bunch of them in there. Hmm. Interesting. Nope, 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 nope. Getting distracted. This means that you just get one plant to mutate. One sleet wheat plant to mutate and give you exuberant seeds. And you will end up with 18 exuberant sleet wheat seeds. You plant all of those, you can feed about 57 duplicates on them. Um... Yeah, let's have a quick look over here. You see, when it comes to sleet wheat, they're a bit weird in that each seed is worth 400 calories, no matter what you turn it, in, no what you turn it into. For example, three, three seeds will make you 1,200 calories. If you decide to make a pepper bread out of it, it takes 10 seeds, and that will actually give you 4,000 calories. So each seed still gives you only 400 calories, no matter what way you turn it into or what you make with it. So all we have to hold out for is one plant that mutates with the exuberant trait and then we can get have 18 seeds which will feed more than our entire colony needs in fact i think about seven exuberant seeds will be able to feed like 20 colonists so what do we care <laughs> that's it's just stupid of course we will have to get a few other mutations on some of our other plants but that is for another day one other bonus i forgot to mention it also drops four kilos of a rot pile every time it uh every time you harvest it so you get four kilos of rot pile which you can then turn into dirt to feed it and you got to remember here, this thing only consumes, what, uh, 7.5 kilos of dirt per cycle. And it only takes about two and a half cycles, or two and a quarter cycles for you to grow it, assuming your farmer can stay on top of it. You might want to get a second farmer. Yeah, we might want to get invest in that. 
So the, the actual resource consumption of this thing is absolutely minuscule for the amount of calories you get out of it. It's kind of incredible. So this, this one plant or this exuberant strain is the one reason we have spent so much time putting together our reactor, all the radiation stuff to go around it and uh, making sure we've got that nice cooling going on for it. And that's, it will take though about, well, we're probably going to have to run a few crops before we get the lucky one, but you know what? That's fine. I can wait. In the meantime, I'm going to have to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.